Hi, Brett Van Scooter here, owner of Van Scooter Insurance Agency. Thanks for checking out my video blog here. Uh, this month, my question is, are you an eagle eye? Uh, now, I used to consider myself an eagle eye uh, when it came to reading contracts or anything that I needed to sign. You know, I used to go through and I used to be the person who would actually read the information in there. Uh, and then I always had a bunch of questions for people uh, about different language and need things to be explained to me, which is great because it really helps you fully understand what you're signing up for. Uh, you know, but I guess uh, over the years I've just been beaten down uh, by the sheer volume of things that I need to sign and the fact that I usually feel like uh, I just can't change what's on the document. So even if I don't agree with a contract, if I want that product or service or uh, you know to to do some uh, event or something that I need to sign a contract, the company isn't going to just change it for me or make an exception for me. Uh, so you're pretty much stuck signing that piece of paper if you really want it, or you just have to choose not to do it, uh, you know, or get that service, whatever it may be. Uh, but the one thing I do make sure that I always look at is anything that I sign, I always make sure anything that I can change, uh, like my information or answer to questions, I always make sure that that information is accurate. Uh, and correct on there. So that so I'm, I'm still pretty much an eagle eye, uh, but maybe I, I don't kind of really read all the, the, the lingo in the contract. I definitely skim everything to get a general idea of what's in there, uh, but I'm not just taking the time to, to go through and read the whole thing. So now, the one thing is I urge everybody, uh, and pretty much now I almost require, to read your insurance application. Uh, not only that, but also your insurance policy. Uh, at least peruse it so you know what's in there. Uh, but the insurance application is sometimes an overlooked aspect of the process. You want to make sure that everything on that application is correct because that is a legal document that you're signing and you want to make sure that you've answered everything correctly. Now this month I was reading an article in the September uh, 2013 issue of Rough Notes magazine and they basically had a case in there where someone really got bit by probably not reading their application. Uh, thoroughly. Uh, the kind of the details of, of the case are uh, there's a, a, a guy applied for homeowners insurance, uh, got it through an agent and insurance company. Uh, on the application there was a question uh, that's, that says, and I'll read it just so I make sure I get the verbiage correct here for you, uh, you know, has any insurer canceled, refused, restricted, or declined to renew similar insurance? For you before. And now the insured answered no, saying that none of those had happened to them. Well, unfortunately, that wasn't the case. Uh, they were actually declined uh, coverage by another carrier carrier for a previous homeowner's fire that they had. Um, so, you know, that question was answered wrong. Now, it turned out this person ended up having another fire at their house, and this was years apart, you know, 10, 15 years apart. Uh, ended up being a substantial fire, over $475,000 of damage uh, was ended up paid out to the insured. Uh, well, a whole bunch of you know, situations came about that you know the insured ended up suing the agent and the insurance company again because uh, they didn't think that the, the limits were adequate. Well, upon further investigation, the insurance company did a little bit more digging, pulled out the original application, went through it, read it, found out that that answer was answered incorrectly, that saying that they weren't declined, but they were, they found out that they were. Uh, so they ended up saying, you know what, we would not have insured you if we knew that another insurance company had declined you. So they consider that what they call in the insurance business a material misrepresentation. So what happened is the insurance company said, all right, we're just going to cancel this policy back to day one. So they sent them a check for all the premiums they paid to them, which was amounted to just over $1,000. And then they uh, demanded that they paid them back the $475,000 plus, uh, plus interest on top of that. Uh, so this person, uh, you know, got bit. Now, I don't know what happened on the application. If the person was intentionally uh, answering no to that question, or maybe sometimes, you know, you know, there's a lot of questions on applications. Maybe the agent put uh, assume no, put it on the application form, uh, expected the, you know, the insured to review it when they signed it. Uh, so, you know, you, you don't know what's happened, but we know that if they had read the application, 
uh, thoroughly, they would have realized that that was answered incorrectly, and they could have changed the answer, and it really could have affected, you know, how much they, they got. So obviously, that's a very expensive lesson to learn uh, that, you know, over four hundred seventy-five thousand uh, dollars is a costly mistake, and I mean that's your home. You're not gonna be able to rebuild it. You're out all that money. Uh, you know you probably still have a mortgage on the hook. You know depending. So uh, you know I urge you to read your contracts. You know everything, uh, insurance applications especially. So I know that going forward, I'm probably gonna be a little bit more diligent on reading my applications after reading this because it's things like this that you read that scare you into into doing more. So now, if you find these uh, blogs informative and you'd like us to be your agent, we'd be happy to help you out. Give us a call at the number below for a free, no obligation insurance quote. And remember, Vans Scooter Insurance, don't be fooled by name. We insure more than vans and scooters.